Metal Up World, this is CJ. I am the Metal Motivator. Seated next to me, let me see. When you're talking about the ivory halls of higher education, he is the fire-breathing professor of ass kickery. He's the dean who destroys all things douchebaggery. At the Spartex Slaughterhouse, he is the chief butcher of body brutality. <laughs> In terms of your politically correct friends, he is toxic masculinity, and within the sacred tribe of heavy metal thunder, he is Patrick Heavy Metal McNamara. Wow. That was awesome. Man. Thank you for that. <laughs> what, I, what I find most of the time, Mac, is that people like our banter. They like to hear you and I go back and forth. So the last time we did Q and a mm -hmm. for the podcast, that I was think, fun. I think that did really, really well. Mm -hmm. So therefore it's my goal to keep Mac engaged. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Otherwise a podcast is five minutes long. Mm -hmm. Mac's like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> he's out the door. Um, so I thought I'd go back and just, and I want to focus on some of the things that are really, really important to Mac because those are stuff he loves to talk about. And, um, you know, uh, one of the things that he's mentioned to me personally, and of course, he said on this podcast several times, especially when we get that most off question asked, what are you reading or mm -hmm. what books do you recommend? It's always one book, Mac. Yeah, there, there's always one that I put in my top five, regardless of whether it's uh, a leadership book, a, um, you know, performance book, uh, history, right? Because it could fall into all those genres. So, but it's always, I always have that one in, in my top five. That's going to be the subject of um, this podcast today. And it's uh, Undaunted Courage mm -hmm. by Stephen Ambrose, who's a, uh, I don't want to say he's a popular because he's, because he's a historian. So he's not like a pop writer, but his books are, his books are popular. Yeah. So um, Undaunted Courage, this is the story of the Lewis and Clark uh, expedition and we're going to get into this and break this down. So obviously somebody could watch Mac, uh, they can read the book and they can watch a documentary, whatever. But this is going to come, this is going to be filtered through University of Badass. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so yep. we're going to as talk about it. As badass as it was, we're going to make it. <laughs> we're going to make it bad even more badass. -er. And so, in fact, Mac, just mm -hmm. what I'm thinking of is in the next episode, I think we should, uh, we should talk sports psychology. Oh, cool. So, All right. So we'll break down what we want to Mm -hmm. The content we want to consume between yep. now and then, and we'll talk more about that. So that's a that's a it's between you and I. We won't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> but undaunted courage, Mac. When did you come across this? Well, what what first attracted you to? What was it attra being attracted to the story? Did you know about it growing up? I mean, how did you mm -hmm. come across this? No, I I came across it when I was still active and I was looking for an area in the continental U.S where I could take my guys on a high alpine, long distance orienteering walk with emphasis on privation. Right. I had already been on one and it was in Wyoming, Wind River area. I, I walked from Pinedale to Dubois, which for those of you who know that, that's, you know, that's some terrain right there. Right. That ain't no joke, that's a good movement. So the next time I found an area uh, in Montana and I realized that, you know, the core discovery tracked through a bunch of that stuff. So I started researching them and where they went in that yeah. area. Uh, and then found that book came out right about the same. When, when was this written? Um, was this and I know it took Ambrose like seven years to write it. Cause I think he packed his family into a, into yeah. an RV and he actually he, traveled it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 96. Right. So yeah. it was, I, I found that area of Montana in like 98 so okay. shortly after that book was written and then dove into that and went, Oh my God, why don't I know more? Why don't we, why don't well, Americans know more, yeah. know more about Lewis and Clark and the core of discovery? Right. You right. know, and, and, and what led up to it and, and its purpose. And man, I, I just became entranced with right. them. And that it, I tell you, that is a well-written book because most of it is just um, based on their journals. Yeah, you know, yeah. And, and Ambrose paraphrases and right. adds his two cents and his research chunks and everything. But he writes it like a story, right? So it's you're not just reading the journals; you're reading his 
basically uh, narration of the journals. Yeah, Ambrose took an approach not all that dissimilar from what Shelby Foote did with the Civil War series mm-hmm. that Ken Burns also did his thing on. Now, his was three volumes. It took him like 25 years to write this. He was going to just do a short little one. Mm-hmm. And then it turned into, he said, if you really want to do it right, in 25 yep. years wow. to write that whole thing. Mm. But he said, he said, you know, I did not go to original source material. He said, because... That stuff had already been unearthed. Right. You know what I mean? So he goes, I wrote from the printed page. But he was initially a novelist. Hmm. So the way he tells the story um, is really interesting because he's telling it from an ad, ad. So his descriptive is more novel and narrative. So it's much, much more interesting read. And he did what what Ambrose did. He, he went to all the Civil War battlefield spots yeah. at the time of year that they Oh, right. Transpired course, yeah. so he could get the feel get the, of the, whatever. Yeah, look, listen, feel, yeah. sights and sounds of the um, battlefield. And so or... that's, you know, that's part of the beauty of the way. Ambrose has a lot of that in here. So he's obviously writing from the written word. So he, he knows what, he knows his audience. He knows what mm-hmm. his audience needs to hear. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about um, the journaling and all that sort of stuff because there's a lot of gaps. There's a lot of, yep. you know, and and people try to explain. I have actually, have, I've heard everybody's explanation as far as, you know, Lewis's death right. to to the reason why his journals were at were just had huge swaths like for a yeah, year right. of no entries. Mm-hmm. They blame it on some of the psychological stuff. We'll get back to that, but um, I have a different opinion about that. However, uh, going back to what you described for this, for you started out with, you wanted to take some of your guys. Yep. And to track some of that land that they walked. Track some of that land. Now, there's something like that, just as a, as a anecdotal question, you can just say, hey, I want to take my guys. And they just say, yeah, go for it. Uh, you got to justify it. I mean, there's, you know, there's a cost associated with that stuff. And, you know, there's risk analysis and all that. So you got to justify it. You got to write up a report. You can't just say, hey, I'm going. And okay, hominus dominus, leftist, right? You're good to go. <laughs> have, they, have, they, have, have they ever uh, quantified the the actual price value of an individual? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't I can't recall what it is, but it's, it's stupid. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're, you know, $6 million men. <laughs> you know, <it's>, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so Ridiculous. yeah, so you, you can't just take them up to grizzly bear country right. and get them unnecessarily yeah. killed. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You know, a lot of that land that they chartered, that they crossed is still untouched, which yeah. is cool. It's, it, you're seeing it the same way they saw it. Right. A lot of it in, uh, some of the wilderness areas and the, in the bitter roots and all that yeah. stuff, it's still untainted. Now. So when you go back, uh, you know, semi-annually mm-hmm. to to montana um are you still getting close to some of the areas that they were or yeah i uh l- like last year i did <clears throat> we i stayed in Gro- great falls the night before right and then went to the core discovery or lewis and clark museum there in mm-hmm. great falls okay. and you could walk along you know the high pitch of the great falls and you look down and you go holy crap man oh my god you know and and the museum you get really good perspective because they have a life-size model of these guys dragging one of their keelboats oh. up a cliff. The keelboat? Yeah. That, not the keelboat, the uh, period. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, and it's life size. And it looks, it's really well put together. Yeah. I mean, because they're pulling and, uh, you know, all these, whatever they are, wax figures or whatever, look very lifelike. Yeah. Uh, but the, that museum was well worth the price of entry, whatever that was. The 13 14 dollars. Yeah, I think is this is one of those things which is why I wanted to do this, Mac, where if you don't get into the story and look at this, you will completely I mean, it's beyond unappreciation. You yeah. don't know shit about mm-hmm. this. No. And I, and I think that goes, you know, I was talking to my friend the other day, we we're talking about heavy metal and um the difference between Europe and here. And I and I've said this on this podcast before, but one of the differences is that you know why you have so many power metal bands over in Europe? Mm-hmm. You know, singing about freaking barbarians and Vikings yeah, right. and knights and shit. Mm-hmm. Well, because they have castles on the hillside, right? And a lot of them, they know their history. Mm-hmm. Americans have a very short history, and most people don't know it. Yeah. And so our songs are all about our dysfunction or rebellion or whatever, because that's mm-hmm. in our DNA. Our history is very short. Again, most people don't know it, and so this is such a huge. Thing. I mean, you might, people not even realize, you know, they when they think of St. Louis, they think of the big arch. But you yeah. know what that arch is there for? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, and then you miss out, you know, now with um, the anachronism of social justice, woke people going back and criticizing, you know, the uh, some of the 
uh, American fathers mm -hmm. because of the slavery and all this yeah, sort right. of stuff. So Jefferson's name now gets mm -hmm. besmirched. And, and, and that's horrible because he was actually the first emancipator. He was the first. He, he, he won, you know, that was his goal. Yeah. The, the guys were, his peers were like, eh, you know, politically, that's not the most popular thing. You know? Right. It was kind of one of those. But yeah, he wanted to abolish slavery. He was the first one. Yeah. Uh, he was adamant about it. And yeah, he had an, he had an affair with yeah yeah he, he had a, he had a lover a slave, <laughs> you know, one of his slaves was a lover but he loved her you know yeah, yeah it was it was a true romance yeah and you know I think what's what often happens you can even look at this from a band perspective that's why I don't accept people's criticism of a band like Metallica mm -hmm. I'll say they'll say well, yeah but what about this album and right. what about the snare on St. Anger it's like mm -hmm. okay let's weigh the snare on St. Anger against everything else they've achieved right. you're telling me it's so equal that you just threw out all your albums yeah. you're an idiot yep. you're just an idiot man you're an idiot mm -hmm. you're emotional reactionary same thing here so they're going to discount the vision mm -hmm. That Jefferson, I mean, if you want it, where does Lewis and Clark begin? It begins in Jefferson's mind. Yeah, man, it really does. You know what I mean? So yeah. he spent, what, 15 million to- Yeah, 15, he, <clears throat> 1803, 15 million dollars to buy this chunk of land called Louisiana, yeah. which is basically everything west of the Mississippi. Yeah, and not knowing exactly what was out there. So that was $8 per square mile. <laughs> yeah, it was like, it was five cents of something, five yeah, cents of something. Acre, yeah. yeah, whatever it was, I don't know what, yeah. But but from Napoleon. Right. He yeah. got it from Napoleon. Yeah. Dude. 15 million, bro. <laughs> I want to see those texts. Yeah, right. No kidding. <laughs> Between Napoleon yeah. and Jefferson. Yeah. Jefferson's all well written. Yeah. But like you said, not having no idea what was out there. There was no. just there were horror stories. There were still woolly mammoths. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, they believed there was woolly yeah, mammoths out there. They had no idea. Our dinosaurs are really extinct. You know, yeah. what are we gonna find out there? I know we're gonna find saber tooth tigers yeah. and woolly mammoths. They were yeah. they were sure of it. Right. Yeah. So that's where it started. I mean, he, you know, he wanted to see what this country was about. He had a vision. You know, I mean, again, he still had Columbus in his mind. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So he, he still was concerned about that waterway from east to west right. and in, then into Asia so that there would be. It was all about trade. Everything yep. was about trade. So the Spanish that were still there, you know, the French Canadians, mm -hmm. it was still all about the fur trade. Every Indians that they encountered, the only white people they ever dealt with. Yeah. For the most part, everything was controlled by the fur trade. And it's funny because, you know, you know, our economy obviously is based on something a whole lot different. And so, you know, we don't realize until you get into a story like this, the bartering that went on, you know, survival was based on mm -hmm. things like fur. Yep. And to be able to trade that for metals, for mm -hmm. rifles, for tobacco, yep. whiskey. Yep. Not only survival, but whether you live or you die, <laughs> not just, am I going to be hungry yeah. or cold, but do I live or do I die? You know, how can, can you trade? Can you barter? Can you establish rapport? Those yeah. kind of things. Yeah. So Jefferson, that's it's, it all goes back to this guy's vision about the American empire. And this is different because, you know, he's a, what they call it the a Republican or democratic Republicans yeah. as opposed to the federalists. Mm -hmm. And so he he was pulling this move like under uh, under under, rats, the, under the radar, way under the radar. He yep. did not want them to know right. what he was doing. He was doing it all on the down low. So the so fact that, he could, that's so freaking cool, it's not even funny. <laughs> the fact that he could get this thing sold, yep. and did this, mm -hmm. and then immediately thinking about you know who can I get? Right now that I now that I bought this backyard. <laughs> You know, which which spans, you know, millions of square miles. How, yeah, how do I find out what's out there? Dude. You know, because there's very little written. It was, it's mostly uncharted, but the only people who were out there, white people, right. were a handful of fur trappers. Right. There wasn't a lot going on. Right. I mean, it was uncharted and absolutely zero built buildup. There were no dirt roads or anything. There was nothing even mapped. There no. were no maps of it. No, there was None. so much guesswork yeah. going on. Yep. I mean, asking, asking them back then to find a Northwest Passage was, was, would be like a couple of dudes asking us right now to, to build a craft in my kitchen that we could take to the moon. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I think that that remark was even made by somebody. Mm. 
I think it might, might have been Clark. Yeah. Um, somebody had made the notation that it, you know it was it it would be equivalent to going to the moon and back, right. whatever. Yep. Oh, that was a mm -hmm. you know talk about a foresight. Yeah, really. You know, yeah. To be able to think that yep. that eventually is going to happen. Yep. Um, but again, going back to this vision, what's what amazes me, Mac, about these these the founding fathers. Because let's face it, they built the greatest country mm -hmm. that's ever existed right. in the history of the world. Yeah. I mean, that's that's not a joke. That's not American bias. Right. It is the greatest country. Yep. So no, it's Sweden. No, everything else is a pale reflection. We're, I, I mean, it's semantics. We're not saying best country. We're saying greatest country. Yeah. <laughs> it's semantics. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it is the single greatest country, but it all does go back to what was, you know, fueling this particular age of history. Now... It was interesting for me to go through a lot of the story because of my personal knowledge of the history of philosophy and Western civilization, and even from the religious standpoint, um, because I knew, obviously, that these are still guys very soaked in the Enlightenment. So the idea was with the Enlightenment, it was, we know now there's a connection between what we know in our heads and what happens in reality, and that's why we can predict where a cannonball is going to fall and when winter is going to start. You know what I mean? So that's it's set over against the Dark Ages, mm -hmm. right? That's what makes it an enlightenment. Dark Ages meaning one completely governed by religious presuppositions and not, you know, man's reason, so to speak. Now, of course, we're living now in the postmodern age where every, everything is, it's, it's somebody on a cell phone who's like a total esoteric pagan. Yeah, right. You know, so it's juxtaposed. People are believing in ancient esoteric occult rights mm -hmm. all the while texting their friends yeah, right. on it so it's a weird yeah. it's a weird dynamic mm -hmm. but these guys no they were as pure children of the enlightenment as you can get they believe that you know through reason through will through force man you could conquer yep anything mm -hmm. and they had just beat the british yeah yep. i mean the empire mm -hmm. so now he's thinking okay well we're gonna go check out what's what I just bought. Yeah. So he's got to find somebody. Well, I, I fortunately had a buddy living with him who was a secretary. Yeah. This guy named Meriwether Lewis, who was a, a, an army vet, you know, a war vet and, and uh, very accomplished woodsman. He knew a lot about medicine too from his mom. Yeah. Because his, let me see, his dad was killed in, during the Revolutionary Western War. Yeah. And his dad was well to do. He didn't get recruited or drafted. Right. He volunteered. Yeah. He bought his own gun and stuff and said, well, duty's calling. I'm yeah. going to get me some. <laughs> and he and did. Uh, yeah. So, you know, Lewis was brought up by his mom, who is very well accomplished in uh, like primal medicine and yeah. stuff like that. And it's still legit. Right. I mean, when herbal. you look at a lot, yeah, herbal. And it's still legit if you look at, yeah. you know, some of the remedies they were taking for whatever it is, a rash to a stomach ache. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to what we're doing now. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't a bunch of voodoo stuff. They weren't bleeding people and yeah. crap like that to but, get rid but of the flu. Was, was Jewea, they did. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, 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 oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, couldn't yeah. figure out what the hell was wrong with right. her. But, yeah. um, but well, that's that's a good, interesting footnote because I was amazed at the miracle-like uh, healings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With from the dysentery to you name these guys. Right. You, you thought oh, these guys are dead, and then <laughs> Lewis, like, I gave him some of this. He was all right in a couple of days. Yeah. Like yeah. how? Yeah. How, dude? <laughs> I gave him the elixir of chalk with three parts <laughs> resin and one part uh, mule uh, piss. piss, whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> That's literally what it was yeah. like, man. And yeah. and these guys are like they're feeling good after a couple yeah. of days. And mm -hmm. but yeah, so he's he's secretary, and so to get him ready. Jefferson sends him to the Philosophical Society yeah. up in Philadelphia with a bunch of freaking eggheads. Yeah, he studies for like a year straight. Yeah, Just nothing all but kinds of crime, man. Yeah, that's <laughs> the other thing about Lewis, dude. Was just the this. I don't know how you describe his work ethic and intensity. Because what wasn't it? While he was studying, he was also building a supply list as well. Yeah, he was. He also was trying building. to map out. What all the can, can you imagine the list the logistics behind that? I mean, you know, how many sewing needles they need, yeah, how many pounds of salt, and yeah. you know, how many ball bearings, the amount of gunpowder, you know, yeah. he had to he yeah. mapped all that stuff out yeah. while he was doing all these studies. It's ridiculous, dude. It's 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 almost you know, superhuman because. I was amazed at how long that lasted. Mm -hmm. I kept thinking, they got to be out of stuff to trade. Right. 
And every yeah. time they, they go, well, yeah. we finally gave him another rifle. I was right. like, well, where are you, you guys pulling rifles out of your ass yeah, or something? Because yeah. you're in the freaking, you know, the, this, these mountains. And they had, where a, lot you of, find they had a lot of glass beads, man. <laughs> a lot of glass, a lot of those metals, too. And yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. Um, but yeah, he did. He made that list and he, you know, he studied botany and yep. uh, geography and mm -hmm. navigation yep. because they had to, uh, just the note taking and yep. that, that they had to do every step of the way, the measurements, mm -hmm. getting off the boat and going, okay, oh, look, I just saw this prairie dog. He doesn't know it's a prairie dog. Right. No idea. So it's, he catches it. Yeah. And somehow from way the hell out there that thing makes it all the way back to jefferson <laughs> send a runner man back down river <laughs> build a dugout canoe and get this prairie dog back down to jefferson you know something like that it was, it was absolutely insane yeah. what these guys did mm -hmm. so yeah so all of that preparation ahead of time in the meantime again still being mentored by and dude jefferson's your coach mm -hmm. your life coach is thomas jefferson right i mean you're all i mean meriwether is a badass in his own way. right. You know, mm -hmm. even though he, I mean, he was military, did a lot of admin stuff, but still, I mean, Jefferson saw in him, you know, the industry, the mentality, the the possibility to persevere, et cetera. And Lewis jumped at the chance mm -hmm. too. And they were talking about it. Yeah. I mean, they would spend days upon days drinking whiskey. Chit-chatting about this. Chit-chatting about this stuff. Yep. Dude, he mm -hmm. was so envisioned. Oh, yeah. And, and actually, man... Um, and outside of a couple of things, uh, he was so faithful mm -hmm. to Jefferson's vision right. the whole time. I mean, he did not like say, ah, oh, the hell with the old man. I'm tired of the cold. I'm going to go do this now. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? <laughs> he knew what he was doing. Yeah. Um, and so uh, then he's he's got to pick somebody. Mm -hmm. To be a secondhand man. man. Yeah. So his buddy Clark. Another accomplished woodsman. He, you know, he spent time in the military with him. So I, I think that was a that was a awesome uh, choice because I think Clark was more of an accomplished hunter and woodsman yeah. than Lewis was. So you know, he he found a balance. Yeah. And then they worked well together. Their leadership styles were a little different. So there was some yin and yang there. Yeah. They they didn't mirror each other, which yeah. is good. You need that. You need those those nuances, those differences, in order to. Uh, build a good working relationship, especially when you're the only two dudes in charge, man. Whoa. <laughs> now, because I mean, they had to do some good cop, bad cop stuff. You yeah, know, sure, and, sure. Yeah. Well, this is the thing that I think, you know, throughout this, I kept thinking of you as I was going through the story um, because I said, well, you know, this is, I can see in, in, in another level why Mac would be interested in this. Because it is a tier one operation. Yep. Right? So there was a selection right. process. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You had to find the right person, not just size-wise, but skill-wise, mm -hmm. to put together a good team. You had to have somebody who you think could deal with the challenges and you know all of this stuff. And for the most part, what, they, they only lost one guy? And that doesn't even count because his appendix yeah. burst like shortly after they yeah. departed. So that doesn't even really, you can't even really count that. I mean, you know, they started with 35 dudes, lost that one, sent a couple runners, but basically 33 guys, not including strap hangers. Right. You know, core discovery, traveled eight freaking thousand miles. That, that's how many miles they covered, yeah. you know, in two years, four months, 10 days. So several hard Hard winners. Those winners oh my God, sucked man. bad, and they suffered through starvation and and um, all kind of ailments and and they and plus they were working their freaking asses off. Yeah, Can you could... imagine going up freaking river? You know, oh my God, in, in in a river like the Missouri, right. where it that flow is pretty, you know, it, it's flowing well for anybody who's you know crossed over the Missouri River driving. You right. look down at that water flow. I mean, that is some. That's a lot of flow. And they're pushing, oaring, pulling, and then, you know, crossing their fingers that wind's going to go in the right direction, too, so they could hoist, hoist oh, yeah, the sails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and, and, and oftentimes, it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, so going west, they were only making 5 to 15 miles a day. Mm. Yeah, this those keelboats, you know, which, I mean, compared to a canoe are obviously sizable, but... <laughs> When you're talking about that many guys, yeah, that's not a big ship, dude. <clears throat> right, that's really, really small. 
And so they're having to get the, you know, they would do with the big uh, poles. Yep. Start from one end and mm-hmm. pushing it along. If they couldn't get that to work, they even had to get out on get the out. shore and literally pull yep. the boat mm-hmm. that way. And plus, you've also got, you know, the, what was the uh, uh, the other boat? Um, the periogs. The periogs. And then, of course, whatever canoes you want to yep. use eventually. Um, but huge. So they had to build that boat before they went. Yeah. Get all of those supplies mm-hmm. together. So. Design it, too, you know. Yeah. They had to design it right away because... The, there was a lot of supplies that went on that thing and it had to be, you know, the right level of buoyancy. It had to be able to take on, you know, waves and inclement weather. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just designing that, you know, and you could look it up on the interwebs that design and it's like, wow, man, this is, this was a pretty freaking badass endeavor just to design that thing, let alone build it. Yeah. Uh, it was like a, you know, I mean, it wasn't bridge too far stuff, but we weren't building stuff like that. No. Not for riverine operations, you yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, how do you prepare for the unknown? Right. And yeah. they did a remarkable job, and so you have to hand it to Lewis for that preparation. Yeah. Um, and again, like you said, it he took like a year and a half, not just studying all of these different subjects, but then also making that list. Yeah, I mean, the, the supply list has cracked me up. Like, do I take three boxes of fishing hooks, or should I? carry one more box of fishing hooks, <laughs> yeah. you know, because ounces make pounds, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. Right. Um, it's funny because they actually had on some supplies, they had some left over, you know, at yeah. the end, yeah. but some, they went, they went south. And then the other, I, I like their, um, how much whiskey, <laughs> you know, how much whiskey do we need to bring? I mean, they weren't getting, it was, it was, you know, the reward at the end of the day, right. what was it like two gills per yeah. dude? Yeah. And a gill is, uh, I forget. Four, four ounces? ounces, I think. Yeah, yeah. Four ounces. but two gills a day, and it must have been some nasty shit. But dude, that was your reward at the end of the day. You know, let's make camp and yeah. get some food. Let's eat our four to six pounds of meat. <laughs> now, now, of course, there was a couple of them though who, Ooh, yeah. who who got a little bit rebellious and and broke in and drank a shit ton of whiskey yep. and hammered, and they would have these literal uh, trials mm-hmm. on the boat. Yeah, yeah, they ran it. So you, you got to understand that you know. They weren't recruited the core discovery. They were, um, what's a better word for that? They weren't even, it, you can't even say hired, you know, because it was almost like they were volunteering Yeah. because there was, you know, massive risk and reward. And the reward wasn't that great at the end. They promised them what land tracks some cash and, and some land. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, but they, they did it for the adventure, you know, to yeah. be a part of this, right. Right. You know, it, that's why they did that. They wanted to be a part of something bigger themselves. Mm-hmm. So these guys were, they were very loyal. Even when shit got really, really, really bad, they embraced the suck, you know, with very little pissing and moaning right. and got freaking, got crap done. Whether they were freezing to death or starving, they got shit done. Right. There, was, uh, there was no mutiny. Yeah, right. No, yeah, no mutiny. Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> <laughs> two, year, uh, two years, four months, 10 days, yeah. no mutiny. Yeah, you're close to starvation several times. You're freezing Man, to death. You're getting, you know, you, you have all these uh, Indian tribes that they ran into. And, yeah. and, the, and certainty there, Yeah, you know, it was massive. So, yeah, but the guys who stole the whiskey, you know, they treated they treated it like a military operation. So those guys got punished by lashes, 50 Lashing, lashes. Yeah, 50 or, lashes, yeah. Yep. They had one, uh, oh, they had that one guy fall asleep on guard duty, too. That was the funniest part because... When he said, I plead guilty to lying down, I don't plead guilty to falling asleep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, these, they're like, yeah, whatever, and they beat him. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's not going to well, fly. Well, because you, you could, how important is guard duty? You know, oh, that's my God, got, that's, 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 Dude, they, they, sentinels, bro. Yeah, that's, that's your most important task. You, yeah. And, you, you know, you don't have it all night. You're running a shift. Right. You know, when you're on guard duty, you're running a shift. It's not like, well, tonight is your turn not to sleep. Yeah. You know, it's a couple hours. Right. So you suck that up. Yeah. You get woke up at 2 a.m. to pull your two hour shift. Yeah. It's going to suck, you yeah. know, and it's probably raining out and it's cold and it's windy. But man, you got to keep your head on a swivel yeah. because you are in, once again, saber two tigers and woolly mats. Oh, yeah, man. Let alone a bunch of freaking savages. savages. <laughs> <laughs> So they bring, I mean, it is sort of a motley crew that they yep. they get together. But again, this leadership duo, which is really fascinating to me, the friendship of Lewis and Clark ahead of time. Yeah. And when you, again, he, read or hear the letters of 
you know, Lewis's appeal to Clark initially. He's like, there is no one right. I want, I would think, mm-hmm. to be by my side to do this. And Clark wrote, writes back, ditto, bro. Bro, I got your six. <laughs> and he, uh, I think he pleaded with Jefferson to promote him to equal to, rank. To captain. Right. Mm-hmm. So that way, yeah. you know, because he didn't want to outrank him. Uh-uh. It's because he was older and he was, right. he was, and he had a higher rank. Yeah. Yeah. But he wanted to be on, you know, level two. Yeah. Now, of course, Congress did not approve mm-hmm. that. Right. You know, especially the Federalists. Yep. They were just pissing on this whole thing. They didn't believe in this operation. Right. Um, yeah. So, but as far as the men were concerned, they were both captain. It was right. Captain Lewis and it was Captain Clark. And yep. it was never referred to any other right. way. But yeah, I mean, it was a, you know, talk about that relationship. You get this thing where like Lewis is, Lewis is the brainchild Mm-hmm. You know, and he's his eyes are everywhere, mm-hmm. but you can tell Clark is kind of the muscle. Yep, yep, X ring. Yep. You know, sure is. Yep. And he's got the, of course, got the backup muscle at the mm-hmm. York. Yep, his big old, yeah, manservant, <laughs> manservant. Yep, uh, black guy who fascinated the Indians. Oh man, that was that was some great. You know, when it came to establishment rapport, they had they had York, they had Seaman, the uh, Newfoundland, Newfoundland dog. Oh. That was Lewis's dog, which is, you know, a gigantic black dog. Sacagawea. They had, yep, Sacagawea. Sac- yep. They, now there's, yeah. There, there, I, yeah, I've heard it both ways. How, are we, how, how is it going to be officially pronounced in the University of Badass? I'm going to call it Sacagawea. That's what Sacagawea. I mean. Yep. Which, which translates to bird woman. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Bird. She got a, yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, she had a, she eventually had a baby. She, along she, the way, man. 16 years old. She, she carried him through the bitter I know. She carried that baby. To the Rocky Mountains, for God's sake. Yeah. Where right. men were freezing to death. Yeah. With, with, in the moccasins, bro. Right, yeah. How do you go through the Rocky They said they put rags around mm-hmm. their feet. Yep. And walk through the Rocky Mountains in mm-hmm. snow where you can't see trails. Right. Because there were no trails. <laughs> you know, I mean, where, where the guy, even the guys were like, I, right. don't, know, I don't know where yeah. the hell we're going. I don't see white, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but That's you're right. walking through that with moccasins. And right. you're, what, what, they, what they, the Indians said would be there like a, couple days or whatever to mm-hmm. get across the these mountains right and it was like 180 something miles oh man you're the, talk, you, when they were going through the rockies yeah, through the bitters yeah and how disappointing with that you know they get to a top of a ridge line oh my thinking gosh. that they're going to see the ocean and nothing but three more ridge lines they get to that third one get oh. to the top of it peek it out nothing but three more ridge lines and that went over and over oh. and over i mean the heartbreak there that's that was one time where his guys were like, "Bro, this has got to end at some point." What do you do? Because you, I mean, you can't. I mean, can you turn back? I mean, do you, you're so far in at that point now, Mac? I mean, you have been through some, you know, seasons of deprivation, mm-hmm. both imposed and some just you didn't have, you know, right any choice in the matter. Yeah. How do you look at something like this? What, when, this when, right here? I mean, well, now, just that, that, like, for example, that particular season well, with the Rockies. I think I have a greater appreciation for it, you know, when I read about that, because I've been extremely cold, extremely tired, like exhaustion, and knowing that I have to go on, I have to drive on. Right. I have to go further because I had a timeline or, or whatever it was. But so I, I look at what they did, and it is, um, it's, because obviously you had more gear. Yeah. Better gear, better uh, equipment, better food better, sources. Better whiskey. Better whiskey. <laughs> Everything was better. Everything. Better yeah. air rifle. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, they had freaking nothing. You know, they're, they're drawing the maps and they're navigating off of stellar navigation, the sun and sex, you know, stuff like that. I'm trying to remember what, what, what a certain time in Connecticut or whatever is how they determined I forget how they did it. They were doing the math based on what it would be or oh, something yeah, right. in Connecticut. Yep. They could tell something. I can't remember what it was, mm-hmm. but it was just hilarious. Because of lines of uh, latitude. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It was a latitude. Yeah. Yep. So, but they knew, you know, all, even that, just knowing, you know, latitude and longitude and not, I, it, it's, uh, it's, it's not something that uh, most people can fathom, let alone somebody like me who's, you know, been in those environments and has been, extremely exhausted and uh 
starving my ass over what I'm, what I'm, you know, right. I hadn't eaten in a day, so right. I'm starving. <laughs> you know, these guys went days and they were like, well, got to take another horse down. Yeah. You know, to save the men, we got to freaking. Well, you know, th- that was said so much of how much, you know, obviously the killing the elk, they sent hunters out. Mm-hmm. Guys were very capable at that. Yeah. But they could snag there in that day, but then they would kill the colts. Right. For that. And so what you don't, dogs. Right. Yeah. They eat dozens and dozens of dogs along the way so i mean i mean you can imagine i mean it, it was like a, a butcher site mm-hmm. i mean how far did they go from camp to butcher these things right. i mean how do you kill the colt do you shoot mm-hmm. it do you slit its throat right how does that go down mm-hmm. and then how do you open that thing up it's not like you got all the apparatuses to hang that thing up like a deer man right. it's a yeah. freaking horse bro yeah. yeah yep and just knowing how to butcher it right well they were all that was one thing like all of them were the guys they recruited were all accomplished hunters. Some were better than others. Like if you take somebody like uh, uh, Coulter, right. for instance. I mean, that guy was a hunting machine. Right. Uh, the tracker that they uh, ran into with Chicago Way up, Charbonneau. Charbonneau, uh, Charbonneau yeah. Charbonneau. Yeah. You know, he was a very accomplished hunter. So these guys knew what they were doing. They were good fishermen, too. Yeah. I mean, for the longest time, they were uh, they were sort of thriving. Yeah. You know, they... they they had plenty of sustenance. And not only was it meat, but they knew that they had to supplement their diet with greens. And stuff. Yeah, they so did. They, yeah. Were, they were picking stuff out of the right. earth, you right. know, and eating that because they knew the importance of nutrition, which is, it's sort of almost counterintuitive to how we would think of people back then. It's like, what the hell do you know about nutrition? I right. mean, they knew about that stuff. Right. right. Uh, you know, hydration and all, all of that. Salt. Yes. Yeah. Right, right. Salt was yeah. so important, yep. not just for spicing. They knew right. they needed salt. Yep. Knew they needed salt. Yeah, it's amazing. But the amount of intake, you know, they were eating like four to six pounds of yeah, meat, meat per yeah. person a day. Yeah, and they were burning that up, man. Just burning it up. I yeah. mean, they had to supplement. What did they have? Uh, corn and stuff like that. You right. know, on yeah. on board, so they were able to make uh, biscuits or what have you. And he had some soup that he brought with him. Yep, they had the soups. Yep. And the whiskey. I had the whiskey. Now, if they'd have had your your soup, bro. They'd oh, they would. There would have been um, more lashings because people would have been stealing. <laughs> <laughs> if they'd have had some Taconic Distillery yeah, bourbon yeah. and Max soup, <laughs> some Invader in the morning. Yep, that's all they needed. Um, so yeah, I mean, this this crew um, is obviously an elite group. Yeah, and so you know they had to think through some of this, and yes. It, you know, like you alluded to, there was the adventure aspect that draw drew these guys mm-hmm. to it. And just it amazes me that they understood how well everybody knew what was going on. Like when they got right. back, for example, just to jump ahead, when they got back to St. Louis, mm-hmm. you know, for that first time, have, there was like 5,000 people there to greet right. them. How the hell did they know? Right. Yeah. You know, who knew? Who knew? Right. And yeah. they announced it and 5,000 people yeah, there to greet you as you pull up. Yeah. They didn't send a telegram. No. Yeah. So how did that go down? You know. Right. So it just a lot of that uh, there was probably me. just some runner, you know, yeah. on a horse, you know, way up there, and said, "Holy crap! I could see these boats coming!" And he yeah. just freaking hauled ass <laughs> and made an announcement. Yeah, I was uh, days I, ahead. I did a series this week in my coaching group called Hardship, and mm-hmm. that because of the the, lug, the luxury under which we live, we won't describe it as luxury, but this is luxury mm-hmm. in these compared to any generation that's ever lived before us. But because of that. We don't suffer hardship for the most part, mm-hmm. real hardship. And because of that, we are a weaker people. Therefore, we fly off the handle if the cable goes out. Yep. Fly off the handle if the package is late or something like that. And But I mentioned just how long it took correspondence to get across the country. Mm-hmm. So, you know, by the time Jefferson would get a letter back or something from Lewis, I mean, they were like two months ahead moved right. on so mm-hmm. jefferson's like well i'm sure they're at the pacific now right he's like no dude he's at the bottom of the mountains yeah <laughs> man they had it hard even before you know they got to the hard terrain because they had to establish rapport with all these different indian tribes right. and the one of the cool things you mentioned it briefly is um they showed they exercised peace through superior firepower right. they were like, like the first ones who ever did that right and they would demonstrate they would they had a, a, a routine, you know, all right, here's a tribe. So let's get the presents ready. Let's get show York. Yep. Uh, bring the dog up. And then one of the first things that Lewis did was demonstrated his badass air rifle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and when I, when I talk about that to people, they said, what do you mean air rifle? I said, yeah, repeating air rifle. 
They could pump this up to 800 PSI and shoot up to 46 caliber uh, balls and it, through a ri- rifled. And this thing was accurate to 100 yards. And it would hold 22 rounds. Yeah. Yep. Hold 22 rounds and they could shoot up to 40 with one. Now, the amount, and it took forever to pump it up. And it was kind of like a, uh, for lack of better terms, like a uh, the pump you'd have to pump up your bicycle tire. Right. It was similar to that. But uh, it was made by an Italian guy. And uh, it's kind of a, still a mystery because they made him for like this guy, this Italian guy made him for Napoleon. Okay. And it's a mystery still on how that one made it. But every time they would run into a tribe, that was the first thing they would do. Bust out the air rifle and say, look at what we got. And the mm-hmm. Indians would be blown away. And what they didn't know is, are there one of them? Or are there 33 of them up here? Does right, each right. man have one? Right, right. Because we're dead. So, right. We're not going to mess with that because, right. damn, this thing makes no sound, no flash, no smoke. Yeah, we have to accurate. reload. Right. They can't. And this they, thing they is don't accurate. Have to. Yeah. So I thought that was freaking badass. You know, I mean, it, was, it wasn't like, look what we got. We could jack you up. But that's what they were doing. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, like, hey, look at this fun toy he, I have. You'd also shoot the cannon off the top of the key. Right. Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> yep. And then you give him a flag yep. and some medals mm-hmm. and, and whatnot. Give me a Jefferson Peace medal. Jefferson Peace medal. And then tell them about their great, their new great father. Oh, yeah. That Well, that's on the peace medals was Jefferson's likeness. And the other side of yeah. the, like the two hands. Yep, the two hands shaking with the peace pipes yeah. crossing. And uh, they knew how to say that, you know. In different dialects, the, the big father. You yeah. know, this is the picture of the big father. He welcomes you and yeah. all this stuff. And you're a member of we are we are one now. Yeah. And they're like, what do you mean we're one, bro? We're doing just fine out here. <laughs> <laughs> well, in our teepees. I tell you what, man, that I mean, it this is also a good story to, for someone to get a good perspective. Because because they encountered so many different tribes mm-hmm. in succession. Yep. Where it's not just a study on one particular tribe. You know, there there's a romantic, there's a romanticizing of the Native Americans, yep. you know what I mean? To where the people who speak the most about it know the least right. about it, you know? Yep. And so these were some, you know, some of these tribes were They're, totally uncool. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> and they ran into, they didn't run into the brutal ones, you know? Yeah. Uh, like, um, well, they avoided, they avoided like those. Like Comanches or Apaches. Who, who was the, uh, the Latonic Sioux or something? Yeah, who, right. Who were the even Sioux, further north? Right. The Sioux, the Sioux were further north and the Blackfoot. And the Blackfoot. Yep. Those guys were badass, man. They didn't they didn't jack around. But um they you know, the Plains Indians were hurting for certain. They ran into the one of the first tribes they run into. It was early on. They were starving. They were oh, all starving. Um, and uh, Yeah, I know you're talking about, yeah. One of the uh, one of the members from the corps went out and shot a deer. Word came With back. The Mandans? Hey, we got a, yeah, yeah, the, the Mandans. Mandans, yeah. Hey, we got a deer. And all these Indians took foot and just just boogied to where that kill site was. And they ripped that thing open with stones, and, and they, they were s- sucking the freaking the they were sucking the intestines dry, yeah. just right into their mouths. Yeah, just this is the softest thing that I could eat right now. Whatever's in these intestines. Yeah, because I mean the core of discovery been cooking their meat. Yeah, <laughs> they literally ate it like dogs would eat it. Yes, or a lion. Yep, yep. like a, just like a lion would eat it, and they went for the softest thing first. Just let me squeeze out whatever's in this guts, <laughs> dude. Yep, yeah, that was crazy. Um, yeah, to go from them to the Nez Perce, to the Shoshones, yep. you know, to, to some of the Sioux. It was a... Um, I, wrote, I wrote some uh, of them down here. The, uh, the Crow, Osage, Cheyenne, Sioux, Naperse, Blackfoot, Shoshone, Mandan, Yakima, Spokane. But those are some of them. Yeah. And you don't realize, because you know, these guys are, are encountering terrain that no white man has really ever seen before. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously the that area of the country is breathtaking beauty wise. And, and Lewis does record that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you don't, you're not able to do the math until they start talking about how they go to the rolling plains and they're like, okay, there's no timber. Right. None. So there's no deer, mm-hmm. yep. you know? So it's like, okay, well, look how beautiful these plains are. Well, yeah, well, well we're screwed because mm-hmm. I don't know how long this goes on and we can't, we don't got things, mm-hmm. the stuff that we can use from, you know, what you would have if you had plenty of trees around and yep. all of that. So, yeah, we have no ability to make shelter, build fire. Yeah. Any of that. yeah, it's beautiful, but ooh, no food, no fire, no shelter. Damn. Or it's <laughs> like, you know, there was that point where um, before they got into the Rockies, you know, when they was desperately looking for the Shoshones, mm-hmm. 
because they needed horses. Right. Because he knew I can't get all my shit that I've been toting around dragging canoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I can't get all of that across these mountains on back. We don't have the the, the wherewithal to do that. We need horses. Yep. So they've got to find these things. Well, how are you going to find horses? You got to find somebody who's herded them. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be an Indian, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a remarkable story too, because when they finally do, when Lewis finally comes across those group of women, older woman and some young oh, girls. Oh, right. Yeah. And they're like by a little river yep. creek or something. <clears throat> and so he lays down his rifle, mm -hmm. you know, because they're obviously they're scared to death. Yeah. And they looked and they, from the distance, he was like, what? maybe 30 yards right. or something. And they were like, well, we can't run. Mm -hmm. And they just resigned themselves to die. And right. so they just kind of put their stuff down and drop their heads. Yeah. Just like he's going to kill us and yep. there's nothing we can do. And so, but then not too far, it was like a hundred warriors. Right. <laughs> yeah. Next thing you know, man, they've got this big meeting going on. And so. And there was only a couple of them. Yeah. I yeah. mean, they were like. <laughs> but dude, and now to think about now how deep they are. Right. In, oh yeah, they are deep, 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 and so Into uncharted territory. So they come back with him mm -hmm. to hook up with Clark and everybody else, and they start. They're all sitting down. They're trying to communicate and meet, mm -hmm. and suddenly, what's her name? Sakagawa. Sakagawa realizes that's my brother. That's my brother. Yep, dude. Right. What are the chances? Yep. Of that. Right. <clears throat> Figure the odds. That's my brother. Because she was. So old, young age, like uh, yeah, because she was only sixteen when she started the voyage. So right, and, and and it was years before that she was sold or traded to Shabin, Shabin, Shabino, Shabino, uh, uh, Shabin, uh, Sh Charbonneau. Yeah, Charbonneau. Yeah, <laughs> French. Yeah. So she was young. So there had there there was years of separation there. Yeah, you know, years. So yeah, so I mean, you're going through this land, and it's like you don't. I mean, who are you going to bump into? Mm -hmm. So I'm traversing through uncharted territory. Oh, I bumped into my brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. So it it just happens to me. And so she's is he, Lewis writes the emotion, right? And the outpouring was just she mm. was sobbing uncontrollably. Mm. And so you talk about a stroke of luck. Damn, bro. That was yeah. Without that right there, <laughs> that's that, that's one of the reasons she is so highly regarded because without that. Right there, and then of course when she saved a bunch of the journals and stuff when the when oh they, yeah when, when the boats, freaky boy yeah flipped over, <laughs> and she sw I think she was still pregnant and she swam the rapids and yeah. policed up a bunch of crap yeah and brought it back to shore, but then her ability to understand different dialects too yeah. you know so commu communication and then when she saw that chunk of terrain yeah and she, she recognized, recognized the uh, a ridge line yeah she saw oh, that's it right there we need to go that way so. Yeah, she was in, she was pretty instrumental on uh, uh, on several accounts. Yeah, it was you know some of the scholars do note this is what there was a a forward thinking with Lewis and Clark about mm -hmm. stuff because again this was this is you know just at the outset of the 19th century. Right. So you're still how many like a century away from a woman's right to vote, right. all this kind of crap. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so- Brings up a point too. You know, when they had that one vote about, when they finally had gotten to the West Coast, they were in that bay and they had to decide where to go right. to camp for the mm -hmm. winter. And so instead of making the decision, Lewis they, and Clark- they, they put it to a vote. Put it to a vote. And she and, and York were included. Yep, first time in our country that a woman ever voted and first time a black ever voted. Right. Was yep. with Lewis and Clark. <clears throat> yep. And- Again, these little tiny things in the story is so amazing. Mm -hmm. Even even when, you know, again, they're going to Missouri because they're trying to find a passage, right? A water passage across. But then they start getting interested in where the hell does this river end? Because mm -hmm. if there's not a passage all the way across, well, then where does the river go? Right. The river's got to go somewhere because it's pouring shit down all the way to New Orleans, man. Right. I mean, so what? where does this river go? And then Lewis, on his own, walking yeah. up there and, you know, cause it, then it started to dissipate, mm -hmm. you know, and things, you started getting this to the very low lying waters. And so he's following this Missouri until he gets to this brooklet mm -hmm. coming down from the mountains. Right. And he, and he stops and he's like, this is it. This is it. This is the beginning of the Missouri river right, right here. here. And he stops. This thing is 10 inches deep and 
and a foot and a half wide. <laughs> so he, he, it's a religious moment for him, you yeah. know, and he steps down and he takes that drink of water and he, he, he celebrates that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He says the, just this coldest, cleanest water he's ever had. Yep. You know what I mean? And he's just like, wow, all of these, I mean, you were as well, like what you described, you get up to this ridge of a mountain thinking, okay, this, it's got to end here. Right. And then it's Rocky Mountains, snow covered Rocky Mountains as yeah, far as you can right. see. Yeah. And, but with that, there was all of this first time experience mm -hmm. and wonder. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what I dug about it too was the, uh, you know, the nature aspect, all the first time things, not just the prairie dog, but all the birds, yeah. you know, cause they, uh, Lewis was a very good artist. Yeah. And so he would sketch all any species that he couldn't catch and kill <laughs> for, <laughs> his, for a sample. Like. <laughs> yeah. But he, he would sketch them down and, and talk about, you know, what, I mean, the detail that went into explaining and describing a particular woodpecker, you yeah. know, was ridiculous. And then they saw, you know, new animals of amazement, like the pronghorn. Yeah. And it was like, what is, what this is that thing? Which, you know, it's it's our antelope and it's the fastest land animal in the northern hemisphere and you know just to, they ended up killing a couple of them to eat them but also to study them yeah uh no you know easy task killing a pronghorn i mean they don't have you seen those in the junk in the oh yeah yeah i see them all the time yeah, yeah yeah anytime you go west yeah you just look out into like the prairies, open grassland. Yeah, he was like, I had the head of a goat and yeah, this right. and that, you know? Yeah. They're actually beautiful, man. They're really They, they actually look more Af like an African yeah. kind of animal, mm -hmm. don't they? Yep. And then how about their first grizz encounter? <laughs> Holy crap, dude. <laughs> they, they, they filled this thing full of several 50 cow holes. And I think the killing shot was the guy in the river. One yeah. of them ran into the river. As uh, Lewis. Yep. And that was the killing shot. Freaking booge. It was pretty close. You know, I'm guessing like 20 yards. But they ended up um, doing an autopsy on them. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, they, yeah, They took it apart, and they realized that, man, all of those 50 cal bullets went through vitals. Yeah, there was a lung shot, yeah, heart lung, shots, yeah. and it was still going. Yep, yep. Actually, there was, there was uh, Lewis did get caught in the river, but I don't think he, when he was caught in the river, there, luckily that bear ran away. Right. Oh, right, right, right. Because right, right. right. yeah, the bear was too yeah. close. He's like, I can't reload. Yep. His only... Was run in the water like the bear's not going to go after right, you. Exactly, he scooped yeah. salmon out of yeah, that thing right, every yeah, day, man. Yeah. And I don't know what he did, but that bear stopped, yeah. turned around, and boogied. Yep. That's one of the, one of those just God was watching over you, bro, yeah, man. Because holy yep. crap! But they logged everything. You know, new species of trout. I, 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 there, there's a good entry somewhere about all of the new species that they uncovered, yeah. and there's a, a there are dozens and dozens of them. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of different species, fish, flora, fauna, you know, birds, all, all of it. There's tons of it. I mean, they were, they were adamant about collecting that data because that was one of their implied tasks too. Yeah. Yeah. Initially. So they had a list of implied tasks, discover that stuff, trade routes. Uh, Hey, by the way, try to find a Northwest passage. If you can, while you're up there, <laughs> you got all this other shit to do, but you know, see if there's a waterway from the Pacific down to us and Bro, man, unfreaking believable. Well, you know? you know, and that was, you know, another one of the amazing things about Lewis was that we, we call it journals, but these were a lot of it was scientific writing, mm -hmm. technical writing. And it's hard enough to get us to sit down and write something. Yeah. Okay. In comfort. <laughs> right. Um, and this guy has been exhausted and spent all day doing crap well because he was putting in you know grand i don't mean to cut you off there but no. think about it the boats are going up river like i said five to 15 miles a day up river on a good day 15 miles if they had the wind lewis is on the deck he's on the ground right zigzagging yeah looking for a species yeah. and he's mapping stuff out he's drawing all the maps he's writing while he's going he was putting in 25 miles a day. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, you know, he didn't have Sorrel boots and stuff like that. No, uh -uh. I mean, he was hoofing it every freaking day. So, yeah, to come back at night, every freaking night, and to pen and quill on parchment, these journals by... Uh, candlelight. Yeah, candlelight or lantern light, whatever it was. And then to seal them all individually in wax. And yeah. 
Damn, man. Can you imagine those were Instagram posts every day? <laughs> right. All the all the boot people you'd have to tag. Hey, uh, dude, what are those boots? All the boot people you'd have to tag, yeah. <laughs> hey, what what quill is that, man? Yeah. <laughs> and then today culminated by killing a grizzly pear. I need to give, I need a shout out to the <laughs> manufacturer of the specific rifle, <laughs> the powder, the projectile. And of course, he's got to tag Clark in everything. Right, he's got to tag Clark, of course, man. I mean, forget about it, you know? It's got to make mention of uh, Sacagawea too. <laughs> oh man! And yeah, so she 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 gives birth, and uh, they actually called Jean Bat Jean, Jean Baptiste. 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 And yeah. Clark takes that kid. Yeah, right. And her other kid. Mm -hmm. She had a daughter yep. afterwards, yeah. and he raised them both. Man, yeah, they were stand up dudes, bro. I got to tell you, they were badass. That was a different time, different generation. You know, those guys grew up hard. Right. It was part of their upbringing. Right. So, you know, hoofing it 25 miles a day, eh, you know. Yeah. It's run-of-the-mill shit. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, uh, today I didn't eat, but tomorrow I will. Yeah. Because I know that there's deer and fish over there, and I'll just sit down and gorge 10 pounds of meat into me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so they would eat like this. The Indians turned them on all those roots. Right. And... One time it made him sick as yo right. The yeah, whole yeah, yeah. crew yeah. was down, dude. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, it was. I mean, how do you? How do you? You think of miles covered. How do you measure that amount of distance? How do you say we covered fifteen miles today? How do you know right. that? Yeah, you know? right. Mm -hmm. um, how do you pick where you're going to stop? How about remember when they had to portage and they cached a bunch of gear? Yeah. Now they come to a fork in the river. Oh, yeah. yeah which yeah. way is it? Yeah. You know, which way? And they did a, a separation. Mm -hmm. And there was months in this separation. But the instructions were, hey, let's just rendezvous back here. Right here, right here. You know, and they, and they both go in hundreds of miles, you know, yeah. in different directions. Lewis goes like north and comes right, right down. I mean, and they linked back up at basically a 10-digit grid, grid, <laughs> grid coordinate. <laughs> <laughs> And then a bunch of their cachets made it, you know, when they cached yeah. crap, took to walk in horseback and over the Rockies, come back and ended up figuring out, all right, this is where we cached our shit. Well, how do you remember that, yeah. man? Yeah, 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 yeah. All buried. It's been a half a year. Yeah. You know, and, and the stuff is still good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you buried that very well. Yeah. I mean, but they would take all that time, you know, with sap and sealing everything yeah. up and Unfreaking believable, man. And Clark would leave like notes on trees. Yeah, right. Yeah. They find like after two weeks. Right. Yeah. Well, Clark left us a note and he's yep. saying he left at this date and blah, blah, blah. And so yep. we hooked up. Yep. It's yep. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, what kind of technology is that? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, just this amazing resourcefulness, ingenuity, mm -hmm. a stomach for risk. Dude, unbelievable. And the, and the patience thing too was pretty good and you know the leadership style kept keeping the men fired up yeah. like when they first saw uh, the um uh, the Columbia River right they were like oh hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and i mean that that reignited everybody's fire so let's build some canoes and stuff but the the river got wider and they were like when is this river going to end oh this has got to be it this has got to be the pacific cuz it's so <laughs> wide and nope it's not and um <laughs> And they just went on and on and on, you know. But thankfully, at that time, they were going with the current. Yeah, yeah. Until they got, with, the, they got to the falls. Yep. And well, no, I'm talking Columbia River. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. So over the Rockies, Columbia River. And then uh, when they linked up with, it wasn't the Yakima Indians on the Columbia River. It was, uh, oh, the Chinooks. Yeah. <clears throat> they were fish eaters. Mm -hmm. And Lewis and, and Clark were sick of salmon. They were sick of salmon. And it was the best salmon right. in yeah. ever, ever. And they were like, oh, man, we got to have meat. We got to go kill some deer and elk, man, because this fish is getting old. <laughs> You'd think that after, you know, a couple or a year of just chomping down on the most heinous, just meat, yeah. meat, 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 that that salmon would become very welcome. Yeah. Be, oh, They're like, oh, grilled man, over the fire. So salmon. easy to clean and prepare. Sucks. Yeah, this sucks bad. This pink freaking flaky meat falling off the bone, all rich in vitamins and oils and yeah, it would give them all the the, the essential oh, fats yeah, they right. needed. Yeah, yeah, protein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. wouldn't have been as filling, right. but you just eat a crap ton of oh, them. Oh yeah, 
Weren't they, uh, from what I recall, they were um, they were like appalled by the Snooks that, that, at the sight of them. Yeah. They were not the most attractive of the American Indians, you know? Right. Some of them, they were like, man, these people are so attractive. And, right. And then these people are gruesome. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and he would write it down in a journal. Yeah, yeah he you know? would. Now, how many, I mean, what about all these guys that were banging all, 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 the, these, yeah. all the Indian Right. Guys? Well, the thing is, so... You know, they, what they, happened was hunt, uh, some of the trappers were banging them before, too. And these Indian chicks were carrying, uh, what, syphilis and yeah. stuff like that. Because these Euro trappers, you know, had unclean weenies. Yep. So they, what would they do? Spread mercury? I don't know nothing about that, Mac. But right? <laughs> spread mercury on it? <laughs> they or, put mercury in it. Oh, man. It, it actually helped them out. Yeah. It, was, it would work. Whatever they did, it worked. But those guys, whenever they'd go, I mean, they'd get up and, you know, when they would stay with an Indian tribe. They would stay for a while. Right. And so these guys would immediately start hooking up with the women. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, of course the Indians were very, well, they would push their girls. Right. Cause they there. wanted that, they wanted that magic seed. Yeah. They thought there was something that, mm -hmm. that could be transferred through sex mm -hmm. from what the white man had. Right. Yep. And so those guys were like, all right, if that's what they all believe, right, I'm, I'm, I, I'll do it for my country. If I have to, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm part of this core, so therefore, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get it on. So that's why they named the dog Semen. Semen. <laughs> yep. Now, cool part two is, uh, I think, coming back, uh, Semen, for those who don't know, so big Newfoundland, black Newfoundland dog, um, was stolen by one of the Indian Ooh. tribes. So three of them came, I think, during the night, stole them. They instantly found out. Yeah. You know, Lewis was like... <laughs> he was pissed. He was... There was a, it was... I think the closest time yeah. they ever got into combat. Yeah. Because they went with a small party and said, if you don't return our dark, we're going to kill all of you. Mm -hmm. There's this burn the place. to the Yeah. Ground, we're going to kill every freaking one. Of <laughs> Scorched you. earth, bro. And they, they handed them right back. They're like, hell with <laughs> that, man. This dog back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They had done this. They, that was another thing is how many times they tried to steal from them. Right. And yeah. one, one time, uh, one of the Fields brothers woke up. And mm -hmm. You could hear his brother saying, let go of my rifle. Oh, let go yeah, of my right. rifle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the, another one was uh, Indians were taking the uh, horses, mm -hmm. trying to take the horses. And then they actually, so we knifed them. Right. Yep. Knifed them. And then Lewis shot the other guy right through the stomach. Yeah. Yep. So, and then they went kind of Vietnam. Oh, right. Because yeah. they like, like laying down death cards right. and shit. Yep. Yep. Let this be a warning. So it's Blackfeet country. Right. And the Blackfeet, they're, they're badass, man, you know? Mm. Yeah. And so they just, and then they booged. Yep. And it's very valid to do something like that. If you're going to, you know, if, if you're going to uh, defend your property by doing something heinous, it sends a strong message to that dude that right. I am, I am nobody to be trifled with. Right. You do it. This is what's going to happen to you right here. Now, so, was there, I, I let's know. Let's play them out for everybody to see. I know they did the death cards in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, how did that start? What's the logic? Uh, I, I I forget. If somebody told me, I'd go, oh, right, 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 right. So you guys There's, weren't doing death cards? No, hell saying? no. Mm, no. Mm. No, that's for Vietnam days. <laughs> Those guys were just. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to make a statement. Man. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> death from above. Yeah. So that was the one time where they did. They disobeyed what Jefferson wanted. He did right. not want that. He didn't want any confrontation, with the confrontation tribes, yep. and end up in death. So yep. they did kill a couple of the uh, Indians there, but then they they hit the high road, got yep. out as quick as they could, because you know once because again if it's Blackfeet come across this and see that because they knew right. what the display would have meant because they mm -hmm. put the metal around his neck, yep, yep. in you know, the dead guy's neck, and so they would have come you know oh, at yeah. you full bore. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that was, you know, that was crazy, but you know, going back to the river when they finally do get close mm. and they I was just going to bring this up. I know what you're going to say. What they started to smell. Well, it, it was that Coulter guy, right? Cow, the, you're talking about cow shit or no. And he started to smell the Pacific. Oh, oh, you're talking the other way. Right. All right. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. thought you were saying coming oh, back. No, 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 no. Yeah, right. I know what you're talking about. All right. Yeah. Yeah. They started to smell it. Right. Yeah. Pacific. Yeah. Yeah, yep. they they could they 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 could he could tell the and then the, hear the, it. Well, they could smell the salt, right? And said we got to be, and then they could start to hear mm -hmm. it. Yep. And then they get out there, and it's they're essentially in the bay mm -hmm. of the Pacific Ocean, 
landed, we've arrived, we've done everything. It's badass. This is awesome. Yep. And then storms come. Yeah. Like nobody's business, and they're stuck. Yep. And they're yep. gonna build a. That's when they made that. They had that vote to decide where they're gonna do. And then they built what was it? Camp uh, Fort something? Clap stop or something? Yeah. Clap. Yeah. Yep. They built. Yeah. There were several. I, I believe that was the one on the Pacific. Yeah. Clap stop. Now, have you ever seen anything that was a, a of a replica or a drawing of what mm-hmm. that might have looked like? Nope. Mm-mm. I mean, they've got a bunch of the drawings and replicas at that Lewis and Clark Museum at the, right. in the Great Falls. So I Let's say go no, after but, this. <laughs> yeah, but I think in that museum, I've never seen a mock-up or anything like that. Because you, you know what? I mean, what did they have to build with? Ah, uh, they were resourceful. I mean, they and when they built like you know winter camps, I mean, they built fortified log cabins. They didn't mess no around. Kidding. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't just live in canvas, you know? Yeah. They, they, got, they were there. They to, went into Amish mode. Bro, yep. and, they went in to hang out and to stay comfortable. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, again, every it's, it's almost, you couldn't have written a story like this. No, no. Mm-mm. And, and no movie can ever do it justice. No. Cause the movie's gotta be six hours long. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, I mean, it's like, it's one of the things I appreciated about like uh, Gettysburg, the movie Gettysburg is mm. that, you know, it's like four hours yep, right. long. You got like, this is like an intermission. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but even that, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't even come close to scratching. That's just scratching the surface of one battle, mm-hmm. let alone, you know, the entire war or something like this for this trip, which was how long total? Two, Two years, four months, 10 days. I believe that's the right number. Yeah. Eight thousand miles total travel. <laughs> Thirty-three dudes who you know uh, who were constant. None of them freaking died. Right. That's that's unbelievable. Yeah, because yeah. there's so many ways to die. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You could uh, like the, when the like they're going through the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, the steep like the one, one what it was a Clark who said somebody said uh, okay Clark said yeah it's steeper than a uh, a gable of a house man. right yeah. And they're dragging shit. They're pulling stuff. I mean, anything could happen, you know, uh, going, you know, every time they had to uh, do a portage or a portage, yeah. as they called it at the Lewis and Clark Museum. In portage. It's portage. I kept saying portage. We're, it's a portage. We're going to portage to the pub after this. Yep. Portage. But even those were harrowing, yeah. you know, dragging those boats up cliffs. Yeah. Unbelievable why they didn't, didn't it, not only that, but... You, I didn't read about even like a broken femur. No. You know, or anything yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, nothing like that. I mean, they had ailments. They got sick. They, they starved. Really, they really froze. Sick. You know, um, but man, I mean, there was, you know, cuts and gashes and bruises galore. And <laughs> venereal disease. And venereal disease. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> they were like, oh, wait, okay, there's venereal, venereal disease. So you guys are freaking raging like Jamaicans out yeah. there, man. Yeah. They did because they partied. And, yeah. and whenever they would get in, because the one guy was a great fiddle player. Right. And the Indians would trip out. Yeah. So they would go into these big powwows, man, and mm-hmm. they would rock all night mm-hmm. long. And they said like to like one in the morning and they're just dancing. And so they would get up and they would fiddle play and do all that white boy. Mm-hmm dance and then the indians would get up right. and they would do, do their, their thing their powwow dance yeah yep. Yep. and then they're smoking and yeah because they brought a bunch of tobacco too so they had quality tobacco with them yep and there's a lot of disappointed indians w- w- at their initial attempts at trade right you know they were like yeah what is this oh, glass what are these glass beads and shit man yeah. we want booze you yeah know, we want <laughs> guns <laughs> you know that the big thing they knew yeah they, so what, I mean... Well, because the initial guys, they had seen some white men before, like trappers and stuff. Yeah. So they knew what white men were capable of bringing. Like, yeah, but we got a long way to go, and we got a lot of people to see, so we got to spread this wealth out, you know, pretty evenly. Who was the tribe that they were talking to, and they're announcing how they're going to basically finance all the other tribes? And these guys were like, so oh, you're yeah, basically yeah. saying you're going to equip our enemies. Right, right. And we're supposed to be excited about this. Mm-hmm. Yep. It had to be one of the Sioux or something yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. I, I, I believe so. And uh, it, also, if I recollect, the first time they saw Sioux, 
they were blown away at their ability to ride a horse. Yeah. Because of the bare back and everything. They were like, holy crap, mm-hmm. look at these guys. They were born. And killing buffalo. Yeah. They like killed like 100 buffalo and they killed like 23 with their guns. Right. Yeah. And they would come up to them and the horses knew what to do. Right. And yeah. they could just, and they would just fill them full fill of arrows. Full of arrows. Yep. Yeah, it was it was it was a funny. Also, was when they would do some of their crazy portages and all this stuff that all the Indians would gather along the coastline to watch them to fail. watch to watch them fail. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we can't wait to see this. Let's watch these idiots yeah. try to pull this off. Lewis and Clark, my ass. <laughs> How's that passage going, bro? Yeah. Um, but it was man. It was such a uh, you know I don't the, it's. What's difficult about this story, Mac, is to find a single word, you know, that encapsulates what it means and what it represents. I think Ambrose did well with Undaunted Courage. Yeah. You know, because damn, man, talk about going into the unknown Whew, for that long. You are out there flapping, bro. Yeah, because that was, um, he, you know, he obviously took it from what uh, Jefferson had written, right? Where he said, um, he's describing them and he says uh courage undaunted Mm -hmm. um and it's his description of these cats but um jefferson recognized it but i guess it's the the matter of factness at which they contemplated prepared and pursued and persisted in this journey Mm -hmm. that there was stopping was not an option right going back was not enough. They never. I don't remember that debate. I don't remember no. them. Having I think they. Argument. I think they would have died trying. Yeah, pretty sure they would have died trying. Yeah, there was no retreat. This was their mish, bro. Golly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I mean, it's hard to create that sort of thing. To I mean, obviously we do great things every day. People yeah. do great things every day. So there's obviously there's character. And, and one of the things I, I don't like to do is it's easy. The easiest thing for us to say is. You know, everybody today is just weak and yeah, they right. were so bad. Whatever, man. Listen, if, if you lived back then, you would have probably been able to. Do, but you know what? If you read the story, the context of the story, which Ambrose provides you, man, there was crooked politicians, yep. corrupt people, mm-hmm. white, black, Indian, all of the above, man. Yep. Derelicts, uh, harlots, thieves, mm-hmm. idiots, yep. morons, lazy, the whole nine yards. Yeah. Just. Exactly like today. Exactly like today. There is, there, there's really no difference. So it does come down to the character of the individual. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's too easy to criticize in that regard because there were bad sides to this too. Mm-hmm. I mean, you consider how Lewis ultimately ended up. Yeah, I mean, and for me, it's, it's kind of easy to um, as- associate with because that's all I knew for that long. I mean, he had focus and a mission, so he had purpose. So imagine having that much purpose and doing something that grandiose Mm -hmm. for that long. It's an accomplishment that cannot be replicated. I don't think ever again. And then going from 100 miles an hour to zero yeah, and having none of that, Mm -mm. none of your dudes, none of the purpose, none of the the focus, right? having none of that. And then, so, given given the his gig mm-hmm. was governor of Louisiana, right? For yeah. the most part, you know what I mean. And well, just obviously, it's the St. Louis being the the centerpiece of everything, but that whole thing was under his governorship. Right. And of course, he's got you know Clark there, kind of head of Indian affairs and mm-hmm. all of that. He gets bumped up eventually, brigadier general, and yep. so much for the rank thing. But yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just he seen at when he gets back, he gets lost, man. Yep. Yep. Deep state of depression ends up killing himself. So now you can obviously. He failed several times. He he tried. He was bound and determined. Yeah. He he, he shot himself in the head. Didn't kill him. Mm -mm. Because it missed. It went through whatever. Shot himself in the face. Now he's still not dead. He ends up gut stabbing himself. Yeah. Something like that. And as he's dying, he tells the lady, the innkeeper, he says, I'm I'm so hard to die. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Apparently, bro. Yeah. Um, but he, uh, he starts to fall apart because I mean, the whole thing was about this, all of this, uh, written material that he brought back. That yep. was the, that was the thing like, you know, 
that was what could not be compromised. Right. That had to be protected at all. Beyond your life, that had to be mm-hmm. protected. I, I think if they were going to die, they would have chosen somebody to take the letters back. Mm-hmm. I would take the journals back. Right. That, that was the non-negotiable in right. all of this. So, and that's what Jefferson's waiting for. So he finally gets all of this stuff. Well, you know, every, the whole world knows about this expedition right. by the time they get back. And this obviously has to be published. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, Lewis turns into this foot dragger yeah. and won't do anything. Mm-hmm. And so they're waiting and waiting. And then other people, you don't realize because so much attention gets put on him and then secondarily Clark. But there was Gas, who was journaling every single day. Mm-hmm. But you would have these swaths of time, like upwards of a year. Right. Where Lewis didn't write down anything. Right. Now, Ambrose and I think Ken Burns and a few others were talking about the depression thing was the reason. Dude, it, I didn't buy it. That doesn't, mm-hmm. doesn't buy it. You, that can explain a week. Right. You know, that can explain a few days or something like that. It doesn't explain a year, mm-hmm. especially because Clark had journaled about what happened that day every day mm-hmm. except for 10 days. Right. And then he went back and filled in those days. And then Gas had done it every day. And, and some of the other guys did. The Gas published his mm-hmm. early on. And they didn't want to. They, Jefferson was not happy about that. Lewis was not happy about that because that means it's cutting into his profits and yep. all that stuff. But Lewis still wouldn't do anything. Mm-hmm. So to me, the depression thing does not make sense. To me, I look at it as because Clark, and I'm obviously, you know, my knowledge of this is cursory, but I'm just looking at it from a human, the the depression thing does not make sense. I would look at it as because I don't think that Lewis thought the journaling about what happened that day was as important as the scientific material that he was Right. getting and that mm. didn't have to be daily that just had to be right 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 and he i think it's because clark clocked every day right except for 10 mm-hmm. i think he knew clark was covering that shit mm. i don't think he felt like it was necessary he did it because he you know probably had it on his heart at times to describe specific days but you know he knew clark was doing it mm-hmm. i don't think depression explains a year yeah, of not right. writing you know in a journal mm-hmm. uh, i think he was focused on the scientific aspects and um so, you know, again, it goes on and, and Jefferson never gets his material. Jefferson eventually goes out of office. And so now he lacks that presidential power to back him up. And he's lost, man. He, yeah, dude, lost he, soul. He wants a chick. You're right. <clears throat> he had like this one <clears throat> chick he had in mind out there and he named a river after her. Yeah. Remember right. that? You yeah. know, and of course she turned on. I mean, how big a celebrity is Meriwether Lewis? N- none bigger. And he cannot get a woman right. if his life depended on mm-hmm. her. So he must have been a bit of a challenging personality. So he's going to live, you know, with Clark. But then Clark hooks up with that, with Judith Hancock or something yeah, right. like that. And mm-hmm. so, you know, they, so Clark stays with him for a while. And mm-hmm. then like any wife is just going to be like, how yeah. long is this jackass yeah, going to live out. here? Yeah. She doesn't care about no Lewis. Right. That's her house, bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So he's got a bail. He's living in border houses. Mm-hmm. He accumulates debt. Right. You know? Nobody will cover his back on that debt either. Because they can't get that damn big white right. back. Mm-hmm. I didn't have, have, you, you go on and on and on, and his name keeps coming up. We got to get this Indian back. Because remember, they kept telling all the Indians whenever they would visit him, you know, hey, you, know, you want to go back and meet the great father? Mm-hmm. So some of these chiefs would literally get on boats and go back to meet Jefferson. And somehow they got him out there. Well, you know, Lewis is financing all of this back and forth and all of that. So he's doing what he did under Jefferson, which was these drafts. Right. Yep. (laughs) You know what I mean? To say, hey, have an open ticket. I have an open open Mm -hmm. check so I can... Yep. Nobody would cover a six on that. No, nobody did. And so next thing he's screwed now with owing thousands of dollars. To the government. To the government, he's mm-hmm. got to pay for it. He's got to get this Indian back. Yep. And uh, and then he had that. Um, what was his name? Base or something? His is. I don't recall. Uh, when he was governor. Oh yeah. His yeah. right hand guy yeah. who was just a total. Yep. Annoying bag. little douchebag yep. backstabber, the kind of guy who would testify against you at your impeachment trial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> Yep. And then CNN backs him up after right. he gets fired. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> he was an austere and, you know. Yeah. Uh, he was like that. Yeah. You're right. 
Yeah, so he so he's he's just he's surrounded by opponents. He doesn't have you know Jefferson is back at Monticello now, so he's retired. And I mean, how long can Jefferson keep waiting for this uh, publishing mm-hmm. to go back? And just and Lewis is not. It's not just that he's struggling to get it done. He's making no effort. None. No effort at all. But I can't imagine how lost those guys were, you know, afterwards. Like, for instance, I was going to bring it up before. When they were coming back, <clears throat> before they hit St. Louis again, they saw their first sign of civilization. It was cows. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they're like, holy cow, this is civilization. <laughs> I mean, they're out in the middle of nothing. There's no cabins or anything. Right. But, you know, somebody's got some land and there's cows. And that's when uh, Coulter asked permission to bug out. Yeah, it's like, hey, uh, I I can't I can't go back to civilization. Can I buggy? <laughs> <laughs> we go mountain men. A lot of them yeah, did. They went yeah, and just yeah. became, became mountain, mountain men. men. Yeah, and he uh, he he became a credible you know his historical figure as far yeah. as mountain men go. So that takes us into Jeremiah Johnson. Yeah, really. Yeah. So have you ever been tempted to think about? Have you ever fantasized about being a mountain man? Oh hell yeah, man, that would be cool as hell. So what is the gig of a mountain man? The gig, well, it's trapping. Right. Yeah, that, that's your gig, you know, trapping for your fur dude. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to, like, get along with the Indians. Yep. Do some yep. Grizzly Adams shit. Yep. You got to be good at trade. You got to be good at establishing poor. You got to be a linguist. Did you like Grizzly Adams as a kid? Oh, yeah, as a kid. I, I would hate it right now. Yeah. But, you know, so corny. Yeah. But, yeah, as a kid. I, I, I remember it. It. it started as a movie. Right. I saw it in the theater, yep. and I was saw just, it in the theater I was blown. Mm-hmm. Yep. He had his, uh, of course, he had his bear. What was the name of his bear? Oh, man. So people are going to crush us if we don't remember that. Oh. Just write it in the comments. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I forgot. Uh, yeah, I can't remember his name. And then he has an Indian buddy. Yep. Who would always show up. Mm-hmm. And uh, But anyway, yeah, so a lot of those guys boogied and became mountain men. Yeah. They kind of went to that next. So they were forever changed. Right. They couldn't just go back in and blend Hell with no, the normal. Man. So that's that's you've got to relate so much Absolutely. to yep. what these guys went through when they <laughs> came back. Yep. Absolutely. hundred percent. I mean, to have that once again, to have that much purpose and drive and that gr- grandiose of a mission and, and brothers. It, yeah. Yeah. I mean, imagine how tight you were with your, with your teammate on something like that. Yeah. They said they could, they, <laughs> when somebody coughed, they knew who it was. Right. They could tell by somebody's footsteps who it was. Mm-hmm. By yep. somebody's breathing who it was. They know who liked salt, who didn't like salt. Yep. They knew yep. everything yeah. about each other. Yep. And then to come back. So, yeah, so they, I mean, again, the significance of the cow is that it's a cow. Right. Cow means home. Mm-hmm. There's no cows in the Rockies. There's no cows in the Great Plains. That is farming animals. They're not going to be out there in the mm-hmm. wild. They were seeing elk and all that crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. The sign of a cow as they're going down the river means civilization civilization the united yeah. states man yeah so yeah i bummed out a couple guys right away i mean some guys were elated it's like yeah we're home we're almost there right you know we got another day or two or whatever it is because coming back they were they were covering some ground yeah you know 70 miles up to 70 miles a day downhill bro yep downhill <laughs> downstream <laughs> let's just let the river do the work we've worked our asses off yeah. enough yeah put up that sail yeah, it was a it, just a harrowing thing, but the lostness, you see it in Clark. So, I mean, there wasn't much, even though he's governor of, like, the Western Hemisphere now, mm-hmm. and he's got his man Clark, I mean, Lewis, right. he's got his man Clark there. Now, Clark, however, he, he did to, well. He got acclimated back, dude. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. He found a woman. He was repatriated. Yeah, he, he, he got things balanced. He mm-hmm. was, you know, taking care of... Uh, Saka, what are we calling her again? Sakaga Wea. Sakaga Wea's kids, both yep. of them, raising them, kept his promise. Now, later letters that appeared with between the correspondence between him and his brother, mm-hmm. you know, kind of showed a a the slave master mm-hmm. side to him, despite his wonderful treatment with York right. um, out there when York came back and saw everybody, everybody was rewarded. Mm-hmm. They got money, they got land, yep. everything. York got nothing. Not a thing. He was returned back to the servitude right you know yep so that just shows you kind of the it was a backward i mean they were still in transition it's like you know i remember um you can't be too hard on people because anachronistically you can't just judge everybody based on our values today you know um 
and depreciate, as we said earlier, you know, that what they did do. That's one of the things I hate, dude, as I said it earlier, about this woke culture and the depreciation <sighs> of our history, yeah. our tradition, our whatever, simply because you just figured out that there's a hundred genders. Right. Yep. I even hate the term woke. Yeah. Hate it. <laughs> as if it's revelatory. Right. As if it's like you're a prophet and God has just yeah. divined this great insight. I have insight been woke. Day. I am so insightful that I can see that there's more than a hundred genders. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, of course, they were not woke at this time, but there was still, like you said, I mean, Jefferson, what, they, there was a lot of people who were not necessarily supportive of what would later come in abolition. They wanted this this stuff to end. They wanted slavery to end, but you know the economy was so based on it. And there was other countries who also engaged in slavery, and, and those things dissipated in and of themselves. They were able to legislate that stuff out. We went to war right. about it. You know, obviously the abolitionists were very revolutionary minded. So, you know, it's like burn the house down and just start the conflag- conflagration, and we'll settle this thing overnight. Hmm. But you know, this was the 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 prologue to that. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know what right. I mean? This was this was what was leading up to that. And so, like you said, man, it was the first time a woman mm-hmm. had voted in the first time, you know, yeah. uh, uh, African American had voted in this country. Mm-hmm. And it was under the leadership of these two guys. So despite whatever may have happened afterwards with Lewis's, you know, disintegration into the void and mm-hmm. Clark and his I mean, he later freed York, mm-hmm. I think after about like five years or yeah, something right. like that. Um, but you know, still at the time, I mean, he didn't beat him no. at one point. Right. You know, he beat him at one point just because it was just like he said, he's, he's getting uppity. He's getting, yeah, right. you know, full yeah. of himself or whatever. Too but big for his britches. Too big for his britches. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, this was the, the winding down of, you know, what would forever change. And I, it was Jefferson said, he said it would take, what did he say? 150 generations to expand and and for civilization to cover this continent that these two guys just traversed and they did it in like five right yeah <laughs> so right. i mean because and because as soon as they came came back there was like all kinds of expedition mm-hmm. parties heading up the missouri <clears throat> yep the and, old roger bannister effect yeah exactly <laughs> I mean, all of a sudden everybody's going up there and, and they're asking them questions everybody was you know, drilling them this mass debriefing from self-appointed explorers. Mm-hmm. It's like, I wonder if those guys just Clark and Lewis sitting there thinking, "You guys, bunch of amateurs. you're, you're going to make it a week, right? Bunch of rookies." Or just, or, or tell them, tell them like wrong stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Issue them the maps upside down. When you get to this one fork in the river, yeah, go and right. Mm-hmm. Don't go south, right? Because <laughs> remember that part when they they had to debate over which one they were going to go and. The, the men predominantly thought they should go right, right, you know, mm-hmm. and and Clark and Lewis said, no, we need to go this way. Mm-hmm. It took a while, like 45 miles or, or so for them to realize, yeah, we we took the right way. Mm-hmm. But man. And that was all because of the uh, it wasn't the flow of the water. It was the color of it. Yeah. The one, one was like yeah. real muddy. And yep. so, the, so they figured the one going north that was muddy was continuing the Missouri. Right. That was that was valid. That's yeah. a valid argument, bro. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Lewis and Clark were like, eh, "We're going to be eh, the descending." Yeah. We, now we will pull rank right here. Yep. Which was a wise, mm-hmm. wise move. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, after all this, I knew what anybody else would know about Lewis and Clark. Nothing. Right. You know, mm-hmm. only that they. I, I just kind of categorized them with a Daniel Boone. Mm-hmm. You know, just dudes with furry hats and. In canoes, mm-hmm. you know, so I didn't know the story until, you know, you started to talk to me Yep, about it. And that book covers it well. Yeah. Really well. Yeah. I mean, there's a bunch of other stuff out there, a bunch of, you know, there's books filled with, I have one of them on my shelf where I have the journals. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just page after page of the journals and all the drawings and all that stuff, which is really cool. It's a nice book to have. But as far as a reader goes... You know, covering the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, if you want to go deeper, I think uh, I was going through some lectures, but I think it's Gary Moulton is his name. He would be considered like the premier dude. Mm-hmm. He's the one who did the complete multi-volume set just on the journals yep. themselves. So, 
you know, I mean, if you want, if you have a lust of being gagged by footnotes and these sorts of things, you, you will have to do that weighty academic reading to get some more of the details. Because again, you know, you could walk away from this book and not realize, for example, how much gas wrote. Mm. You know, right. Yeah. Who, who, you know, and how much, you know, what these other guys did, because you can't, you just can't fit it. Like you said, you can't do it in a movie. Right. You can't fit it in this book. And most all the guys were, had journals. Most yeah. all, you know, they were all logging stuff down, their day to day activities, stuff like that. So you need to see it from somebody else's perspective. Yeah. It, 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 it really would. But yeah. So you walk away from this going, you know, this is, uh, this is truly American. I don't know any other way. I don't. I can't think of other figures in world history, you know, that compare. Uh, maybe outside of a of the, the adventure of a Columbus or a maybe the Vikings, if you knew more about that. Yeah, but it's a part of our history that we should all know something about. You know, I host trivia at my local pub, and when I first started doing it, one of my categories was on the core of discovery. Fifteen questions, and I kept them pretty light. Yeah, you know, who bought. Louisiana. How much yeah. did he pay? When when was it? And I even gave him a plus or minus two years. You know, when did it start? Right. When did they, you know, and from where did right. they start? That kind of stuff. But uh, I was blown away by how many people didn't know. Yeah. I mean, it was very little. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's... And these are adults. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an interesting time period. I mean, this is, you know, because when, when Lewis was born, I think in 70, 1774. Yeah, right. So you know, he was two years old mm -hmm. when crap was going down yep. and his dad was, you know, uh, musket to musket against the British. Mm -hmm. So when you go jump up ahead to, you know, the time of the Constitution, so he's getting a little older. So he's a young guy. Yep. And so this is the outset of the 19th century. So, you know, what what is that like? You know, because, I mean, you, you don't get into a war again with Great Britain for until 18... 12. So, mm -hmm. you know, you've got this time period like you would have in any beginning of mm -hmm. a uh, of a century. Right. You know, uh, these wars are over. There's an established country. Things are starting to move mm -hmm. west, you know, but for Lewis, it, you know, he grew up in those Virginia mountains. And so he wondered what was above and beyond oh, yeah. all of that, what was out there. Um, so there was a sense of hope and vision and all of those things the the american bureaucracy had not you know it, it was still fledgling mm -hmm. along so there was a lot of you know individuality and in state focus and all of that but they were states now it wasn't they weren't thinking in terms of colonies right you know this was a this was a different mindset you're now thinking of nation mm -hmm. you know more so than just this confederacy right so you know and you can see obviously by the time we get to the civil war that becomes a dividing point you know um is it a war about slavery is it a war about economics yeah it's a war about states rights you mm -hmm. know but the one soldier who said when they finally got down there's someone private and the american troops said i mean the union troops said why are you fighting and he said because you're down here right right you know what i mean to him he wasn't fighting for slavery right. he was he was he's further out west in your mm -hmm. tennessee type areas man who what the hell did they care about what was going on in Washington, yeah, D.C.? You're trespassing. Yeah, it didn't, didn't matter. So here, these guys are out way, out, way, way the hell out west, talking to Indians who don't even speak English and saying, there's a great father now. Mm -hmm. He's in charge. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's funny, but also they would, because they've been out. You, you may as well have told them that there was an interweb. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. they, they've been out there for so long. This is just another footnote that, um, you know, under the sun. Mm-hmm. That their faces and hands had gotten dark. Yep. You know, tan. So whenever they would go to an Indian, the Indian, because they're wearing, you know, leather, they're wearing skins. And so the Indian's like, is this another Indian? Right. So they would have to pull up, he'd have Lewis have to pull up his sleeve and show his bare white right. yeah. <laughs> skin mm -hmm. in order to show, no, 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 I'm a white man, white man. So what would they went with those one Indians and and what's her name told him, uh, he says, So what do I say to him? Right. And she says, Tell him like Tanobi or Tanobi, yeah, Tanobi, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And it like means it, it, she. He thought it would mean like a friendly thing, but it meant stranger, stranger. Oh right, right, yeah, stranger, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like run from me, run yeah. from me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Boogeyman. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. How much were they relying on like sign language? 
Yeah, a lot. That and drawing in the earth, you know? Drawing in the earth. And yeah. then the one time where they were doing the translations where... Oh, from... They were going from English to French to Sioux or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and then to another Indian tribe right. and then another one. So it was like yep. six or mm-hmm. seven layers right? in order yep. to have one conversation. Conversation, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah Golly. Tell him this. Tell him this. Tell him this. Yeah. Tell. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Until the end. And At then, the end. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that, I mean, again, just remarkable. Uh, the, the the stomach, the fortitude, I think, amaze, mm-hmm. amazes me. Mm-hmm. Um, especially the, the in fact, there's that one time where Lewis's entry, he he's talking, I think it might have been when they were going through the bitter roots. Or, and uh, he finishes his journal entry saying twice. He says, patience. Patience. Mm-hmm. It's like, bro. If, if I say that on a Facebook status, mm-hmm. people are going to be like, "You're so deep, bro." Yeah, right. Yeah, no, this is this is mm-hmm. Lewis. Yep. Who, when he says patience, patience mm-hmm. to him, that's what it was. It yep. was because I think I think the because dude, they're obviously walking in freezing snow with mm-hmm. moccasins on. Yeah. Once again, that was life of life or death. You know, it was him being uh, introspective and saying if i don't you know size up the situation and realize that undue haste makes waste we are dead so we've got to be patient yeah but that's it's just like that was his pain point yeah the time it was Mm -hmm. taking Mm -hmm. when there was so much other stuff that we would gripe about right you know i've been eating roots that are making me sick for a month Mm -hmm. no that's not what he gripes about right patience right patience (laughs) <laughs> yeah holy crap so it's that thing it's it's how little they saw deprivation mm-hmm. and how they were in other words they were so focused on the grand nature of the vision that it dwarfed these other things mm-hmm. as details right you know that you can that you can make things that we would consider magnanimous mere shadows mm-hmm. By simply the grandiose size and to be always every day filled. I'm on a commission. Those two are like the Blues Brothers. Yep. We're on a mission from God, bro. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, people ask sometime, hey, if you were to pick a spot in the past, you know, where would you go? To be a fly on the wall? Like to travel one day? You know, with the core discovery? Eh, One day wouldn't be enough. I'd have to go for, you know, a (laughs) month while the weather was nice. Uh, You know, I forget who it was that made the point. He said, you know, when after they had gotten back and Lewis had first gone out to uh, the White House to see Jefferson, he was still in office at the time. And so he brings with him all the maps mm-hmm. and stuff. And so Jefferson sees him, though all that, that he had this hand-drawn map so for the first time, and they lay it out in the Oval Office. Right. And they're there forever, mm-hmm. all day long, yeah. just talking. I think it was Ambrose who remarked, to have heard right. that conversation. Oh, man. Yeah. Because right. how, how, how excited Jefferson would have been. Mm-hmm. Yep. And how matter of fact Lewis would, would yeah. have been. Yeah, we got into a little scuffle here. No big deal, you know. Uh, you know, we were still we were starving to death and our toes were freezing off of us. They were black by then, so we were just, you know, taking them off with our knives because we didn't need those little toes anyway. Yeah, they did have to cut off uh, in some Indian feet. Yeah, right. right frozen. Mm-hmm. And, but with the Indians at one point, um, when they were at, what was it? I don't know, was that the Fort Clapstop or one of the other places they were at? The Indians would keep coming over and they would trade because the one guy was a blacksmith mm-hmm. and he could keep fixing all their crap. Right. So he would just, he kept that mm-hmm. fort going by, because they would come over with their guns or their this or that and he would mm-hmm. beat the steel and make it work and yep. fix things for them. And then, of course, they were completely convinced that Lewis was a healer, man. Right. And again, I'm astonished at how effective he was mm-hmm. with his potions. And that, that, that's his mom, bro. Yeah, man. That was incredible. Yeah. So I gave him, it was always funny as an entry, so I gave him the elixir of this. <laughs> so I gave him the elixir of that. <laughs> Four parts to one part water. Yeah. Then it's, and then that didn't work, so I added this. So I added another part. <laughs> <laughs> and then in a day, he was okay. Yeah. And back to work. Mm-hmm. And with a good attitude. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. One of my favorite, favorite portions in our, uh, in our history. I mean, just 
unbelievable. And having had the opportunity, or if I ever, you know, when people ask, where would you go in history? That would be it for me right there. You know, yeah. That's what I want to see. I want to see some of that. Dude. Mind blowing. Yeah. So yeah, again, mm-hmm. um, Mac, because you have uh, highlighted this story mm-hmm. for all of us, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of people who even commented when I posted, we were going to be covering this. They, uh, they noted that it was your mention in the book mm-hmm. and they've started yep. it and been reading it. So, Dude, that's that's pretty freaking cool. Yeah. Um, always a pleasure to be here. Mac, thank you once again for opening up your home, taking the time out. You know it, bro. This is uh, the place to be for me in North Carolina because I have no friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a friend in the world, man. This is the only friend I got. It's the only guy who cares. Anyway, man, good to see everybody. Good to see Grace and Gretchen. Thank you, dogs, for keeping it quiet this whole time. But we're real in this podcast. <laughs> Here she comes. Yep. <laughs> I called her name. That's it. So remember, and whatever you do, don't suck. Metal up.